uh, welcome everybody on this first webinar on the disciples of the Master DK and we are going to have a short meditation uh, to align the group so everybody should be on a muted to cut out the outside noise and uh, I have divided the presentation on uh, sections and after each section uh, uh, I will allow some time for questions So, uh, everybody please relax, make yourself comfortable. Quiet in the physical body. Quiet in the astral body. and still the mind focus the attention in the head and imagine the light of the soul pouring through the mental body integrating the personality sound the three ohms and imagine the white golden light illuminating the mental body oh purifying the astral body Om. and strengthening the etheric body Om. Visualize the threefold personality as being unified with the white light. Feel and imagine the personality being integrated and functioning as one whole. Personality soul fusion. See the lower triangle representing the personality with the mental body at the apex and the physical and astral bodies at the base of the triangle the apex of the triangle with the mental body pointing upwards above the lower triangle see the brightly lit higher triangle 
representing the soul, with its apex pointing downward. See these two triangles facing each other. By an act of the will, see these two triangles merging together and forming a six-pointed star. See the six-pointed star as a shining sun, representing the soul-infused personality. And sound the silent OM to confirm this fusion. Feel the personality fully infused by the soul light and functioning a soul infused whole. Group alignment. Visualize a sphere of pure white light representing the group. And the group members as miniature shining suns inside and around the sphere. See a sphere of light linking the heart centers of all the group members. A sphere of light linking the head centers. and a sphere of light linking the Ajna centers of all the group members. Imagine the light rapidly circulating through these three spheres and aligning the three group centers. Ajna, heart, and head into one mind, one soul, and one will. To confirm the group alignment, we sound the OM as a group. OM. Thank you. Uh, everybody stay on mute. And
And um, what I will do, I will start uh, the presentation with an introduction uh, to DK's disciples. Around 1930, Master DK gathered together a group of disciples who were organized um, by him into specialized seed groups with the intention to form 10 seed groups of nine members in each group. And these groups were called groups of nine. Uh, but uh, his original intention to form the ten seed groups um, uh, did not realize. Only five groups uh, were actually formed. The telepathy group, glamour group, healing group. Education group and political group. Now, these groups of nine lasted ten years. From approximately 1930 to 1940. When in 1940, towards the end, around November, 39, they were disbanded uh, before the experiment was completed. And the personal instructions to these disciples are found in Dina 1, Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 1. But there are also some group instructions, not in such a full measure as in Dina 1, but uh, in reference to some of the disciples in the books uh, uh, such as Externalization of the Hierarchy, a Glamour World Problem, Esoteric Healing, and obviously Dina 1. Now, um, uh, some of the groups had more than nine members due to personal changes, like some, some disciples left, uh, some were transferred from other groups, uh, but there were never more than nine members in a group at one time. And we know, you know, when we ask why nine members, there is a great significance of number nine uh, as being the number of initiation and it's also the number of Shambhala. So whatever DK uh, presented or used or suggested has always a great significance behind. Um, when he decided to disband the groups of nine uh, towards the uh, end of 1939. Uh, he said that uh, the cause of failure of the experiment was primarily due to th three things. The first one, he said, the members did not respond adequately and esoterically to the group impulse and to the group awareness. Because uh, such response uh, involved the activity of the heart center, which many of the group members were unable to demonstrate. 
because um, the heart center was not sufficiently developed and also the group integration was not adequate to, uh, to awaken that heart center. So you see this is also for us very important uh, a piece of information that what it requires for the group impulse and group awareness it's, it's the heart center must be uh, to some degree developed and the group integration must be such that has the power to awaken that heart center. Uh, secondly, he said that the personality, you know, he said that um, the personality himself expected too much of the group members. He had a high expectations. Uh, but only some of, of the members uh, succeeded to live up to his high expectations and requirements. And, uh, and take the teachings seriously. Uh, but many approach these requirements from the personality angle and have in, in that case uh, slow down the group vibration because their focus uh, was very powerfully uh, oriented downwards to the personality. Um, the third reason, he said that there were two qualities or characteristics in the group life uh, which were going against all his efforts. One was a definite um, and a strong reaction to glamour. And this was provided particularly by the glamour group. And the second quality was um, outstanding spirit of criticism. And that was providing, provided definitely by the healing group, would you imagine? Spirit of criticism coming strongly from the healing group and the glamour that is more or less expected was coming from the glamour group. So these were the major hindering uh, uh, characteristics shown in that group, group life, uh, which were uh, slowing the group process. So this combination of these two factors, glamour and criticism, uh, provided interesting fact which indicated that the group members were integrated personalities because glamour is one-pointed reaction of the astral body and criticism is the usual but sure expression of the developed lower concrete mind. So here we have another piece of information what actually is the contributory factor also to the integrated personality um, which is coming from the two lower bodies astral and mental. And not always it is the it is the mental body which is the highest aspect or principle of the personality which is the integrating factor as we all know. And uh, the criticism is also very strong where there is, uh, you know, powerful mental focus.
the Tibetan said that into his project of world salvage and into the groups which he planned should do the salvage work, of which the groups of nine were intended to be the seed. The glamour group interjected glamour, and the healing group the spirit of criticism. And, you know, this found the root and place uh, in, in, his, uh, in his project of salvage, uh, because the, the point of evolution of the group members, you know, majority of them were at the very early stages of the path of discipleship and between the first and second initiation. And the group relation of the various members in all the groups was also affected due to these two groups, healing and the glamour group. So they, they really uh, shared all the responsibility uh, and shared limitation and liability together. He said that where world values and group consciousness is involved and uh, needed change, the cyclic bringing about, about uh, of the presentation to the soul of the ageless wisdom and the training of the world disciples is the definite technique of the hierarchy of which he said he was a member. Uh, but he said it is not the method of hierarchy to work with personalities. And with those whose orientation is primarily uh, in the three worlds of human endeavor. And it is the same with groups, he said. These are tested and tried in connection with the group personality. And upon the response depends the future activity of both the group and its master and teacher. But it is the group which decide the procedure, not the master. So after disbanding the groups of nine, DK formed uh, the new seed group of 24 disciples. Uh, in 1940. And this was an experiment, again experiment, as was the experiment with the groups of nine which failed. This was an experiment in group initiation and it lasted five years. Um, and those disciples who were not included in this new seed group have either died, left, or were considered to Piscean in their approach to the teaching, and therefore not suitable for the new Aquarian techniques uh, which he was attempting to introduce. And the instruction to these 24 disciples appear uh, in Dina 2. Again we see the number 20, 24. And uh, we know the significance again of this 
number 24, which is the number of Shambhala. So actually we have two numbers related to Shambhala, the number 9 and number 24. And these numbers in relation to Shambhala is discussed in more details in the Rule 3 for Disciples and Initiates in the book uh, race and initiation page 79 to 81 and I recommend that you study this because it's uh, very informative uh, but also uh, uh, quite a difficult uh, uh, subject to go in uh, because it deals with a very high level of energies because we go into shambhalic energies of the will and the first ray. But it is of value to understand uh, you know the the significance. Uh, it is also of interest to know that the disciple CDP, uh, which I would be discussing during the uh, webinars as the first disciple, uh, was also selected to be a member of this new seed group. Uh, but she died at the end of 1940, uh, actually one month after the group started, or around the same time. Uh, that's why her instructions appear only in Dina 1. And her last instruction received in August 1940, which is in Dina 1527, is accompanied by these words. Four months later, which is if we count four months from August, we arrive to December 1940, this disciple went forth to love and serve on the inner side of life. Although out of the physical body she is active in the Tibetan's ashram. The instruction to the new seed group we can also find in some other books but in not such uh, details as in Dina 2. For example, in externalization of the hierarchy, uh, the telepathy and the etheric vehicle, education in the new age, the reappearance of the Christ, and the destiny of the nations. Uh, DK informed the disciples who were part of the new seed group and whose personal instructions appear in the Dina 2 that there is a slight difference in the instructions from those he gave in the Dina 1 uh, for the disciples in the groups of nine. Uh, his intention want, was to uh, present certain principles and aspects of truths which have more of a group implication than a personal one as it was with the groups of nine where the instructions were primarily concerned with the training of the threefold personality and uh, the effort to bring it into a closer relation with the soul and uh, therefore with the ashram.
so this was particularly uh, so in the work with the groups of nine and in the first cycle of a new seed group also. Um, but there it was in a lesser degree uh, where the emphasis was laid more upon the required training for initiation and not so much with the training of the personality. Uh, for those who are really interested about this, I uh, recommend to read the letters we, uh, uh, titled Talk to the Disciples at the beginning of Dina 2, where he is also describing in one of these letters um, or informing the disciples uh, why he has disbanded the new seed group of 24. Why he had to do that. Particularly in that letter of June 1946, starting in Dina 2, page 73, um, he is going in quite a detail about uh, uh, the reasons of his closing of that experiment, even with the new seed group. And some of the reasons he's uh, stating were that the group, in spite of many years of work with him, was not yet integrated. Just imagine that how difficult it is to integrate a group even under instruction of a master. And the group has not produced a particular spiritual enterprise because many were doing very little for the projects he initiated, such as was the triangles, goodwill, a spreading of the invocation, the problems of humanity. And they were all looking for something unique, something special, something secret, outside of his uh, proposed and outlined work. And believe it or not, uh, he said that for years, quite a number of them have done absolutely nothing about their personal instructions. So this is telling us, you see, that um, it is not only, not only then a group member is not listening to the master. We have a group today where somebody representing symbolically the master absolutely ignore the instruction and do nothing. And so the group is not integrated, is not meditating, and so the focus is always going in the direction of the line of least resistance, which is always the personality. But he told them that the ashramic link remains unbroken. But the outer relation is ended for that incarnation. Uh, in the personal instruction to one of his disciples, Dika is further uh, elaborating on the disbanding of the uh, groups of nine by stating that the work of the hierarchy is an integrating whole and each ashram within the hierarchy is dedicated to that whole. 
And to that particular aspect of it, which can be best carried out through its members of all degrees, the disciples in training for some or other initiation. So to ensure that the work uh, goes on as desired, it is necessary that the individual disciple or initiate receives training uh, as to character development and personality attitudes, because these are always the fundamental and critical areas to train and to develop. And it was on this point of personality correction that some of 15 disciples whose instructions were only in Dainawan decided to leave the group because they could not stand that DK uh, shared all the characteristic, uh, char character limitation and personality deficiencies with the whole group. They disagreed with his comments. They were trying to do something else, but not what they should have been doing. And E.K. said, um, I'm quoting his words now, in spite of sincerity, dedication, and wide knowledge, and even a subjective recognition of the accuracy of what I said, they would not accept it. Rebellion set in. Self-justification through rational, rationalization took place and temporarily they became inactive, though still disciples on the periphery of the ashram. Now, when disciples are on the periphery of the ashram, they are unstable. And so the master never knows what they will do. They cannot be trusted or relied on because the soul contact is not stabilized. They are not standing steadily in the light. And this uh, indicates, it's telling us, that even though they have taken the first initiation, they were only at the very early stages of the path of discipleship and not on the path of accepted discipleship. This is a point which I will go into uh, on my next webinar because the title, Accepted Disciple, is found on different stages of the path, at the early and higher. So when we read the references, and there are a number of them where he says, accepted disciple, accepted disciple, we must uh, be very careful to ponder and read uh, from which level he is speaking when he says, uh, accepted disciple, and for that matter, also aspirant, or disciple, or initiate. There we find what we call these apparent contradictions, which they are not contradictions. They are only spoken from a different levels. And they are all correct when rightly understood. So
so. Um, let me yes let me give uh, one example when he said for example uh, to one of the disciples she is still an aspirant and fails to take that decisive step which transforms an aspirant into a disciple. You see, here is an example where he uses two titles, aspirant and a disciple. Now, on the superficial reading of this reference, what would we say he is talking about? Because he is calling aspirant a first degree initiate and telling and saying that uh, this is not even a disciple. But the disciple he means, he means a technically accepted disciple who has passed the middle point between the first and second initiation. And so if we make a wrong judgment on any reference, uh, then uh, we get very confused. It is always good to read a page or two or paragraph or two prior and after each reference and to gather as many of them and put them to together and then make a final judgment and understanding actually will emerge. In 1946, a decade definitely decided to disband the new seed group. And he was telling them that the group at that time, in 1946, had 19 members. So the original 24 members were now 19. And one of them uh, was, has received his last instruction in 1946 at that time. And one of them, with the initial D-E-I, said he was no longer interested in anything occult. So he was immediately dropped from the group. And he received his last instruction in 1944. Another piece of information in 1946 which he shared with the group was that there were, he decided to reinstate three disciples. One from the telepathy group, one from the healing group, and one from the glamour group, which were the groups of nine. And they were reinstated during the last three years following the formation of the new seed group. It means from 1940 to 1943 already. And interestingly, that one of these three disciples who was reinstated even to this new seed group was one and the only disciple who failed to take even the first initiation. And the Tibetan gave his reasons for 
why he has reinstated these three disciples. And the one from telepathy group, RVB, was reinstated because he said he had largely learned his life lesson. At this moment I'm not going to go in detail about these disciples because um, if and when I will come to them, uh, I will enlarge on this in more details. Uh, the other disciple, HSD from the healing group, uh, he said there was a woman, uh, she was making a sincere effort to control her volatile mind and to act as a disciple. And LTSK was the disciple who failed to take the first initiation in that life which his soul planned for him to do, was placed again in the group largely for his own protection from the glamour which so ceaselessly overcame him. He was the one who was holding the whole group back uh, because of his glamour. And you see there is always an exception to every rule. Because we know uh, references where uh, DK said there is no disciple accepted by the master or can enter in, in, in close to the ashram before he takes the first initiation, before the Christ is not born in the heart. But here you are. The master made an exception with this disciple. He was a financier and he supported uh, his work from the very beginning and he was the first one who recognized the hierarchy. And there were other reasons. So uh, the exception always comes from the high above, not from the lower uh, level of energies. In the early 1940, at the same time when the new seed group was formed, the Tibetan invited 14 disciples, and this disciple, LTSK, was again one of them, living in or around New York City to participate in another experiment in externalizing the ashram on the physical plane. And this group was called the Outer Ashram Group. And its members met at every full moon. That's why he selected those who lived close to each other that they could meet on a physical plane and participate in these full moon meditations and gatherings. And uh, he said that this kind of experiment was not attempted since the Atlantean times, but it was discontinued. Then, four of its members, four of the fourteen, and again, LTSK, the one who, I mentioned he did not take even the first initiation, was one of these four. They were reinstated into a smaller version of this experiment to continue the training.
then uh, what does the initial uh, uh, indicate like you know HSD SRD or whatever they are the first letters of the three words which were given to each disciple by the Tibetan to indicate their personal objectives or keynotes of their life intention. They represented the qualities which they had to build in their causal bodies and acquire or make stronger in that particular incarnation. There was one word, idolized, which DK put always as the first of the three letters um, to indicate that this quality needed a special attention from the disciple. But the idea to use these initials to signify each disciple came actually from the disciples themselves. They had a discussion. Uh, and he, they were discussing, you know, uh, responding there to the Tibetan request that uh, they need to submit their personal instructions for publication. So they were considering as to how they could preserve their anonymity uh, and simultaneously comply with the Tibetans' request uh, to submit their personal instructions. They did not want to be recognized publicly who they were. Uh, the specific order of the three words was given by the Tibetan, as I say, where the first word uh, needed special attention. But some of the initial will be found to be different, in different order to his given words. And again, that change was the individual choice of that particular disciple. So as you see, even in a small matters, they always try to find a way uh, and not other than the Tibetan request. For example, the specific order of the words given by DK to one of the disciples was L, are you. But the disciple has changed it to A L U. But when you read the instruction you will discover that which was the uh, quality which the disciple was supposed to focus on even if it was not represented by the first letter as it should have been. Um, as a final information to this, I would say that uh, majority of the disciples were between the first and second initiation. And as I said, one failed to take the first initiation. Some have taken the second initiation in that life or were very close in that life for taking it, but failed to take it. And a few have either taken the third initiation, or were counseled or trained by DK in taking it. And there was one who has taken the third and was preparing for the fourth. So, um, this was an imp important 
uh, introduction to give you all some idea how it all started, uh, how the various projects failed and why they were failed, which uh, the Tibetan master tried to uh, initiate and uh, uh, to bring to some kind of successful conclusion, but it did not happen. And we have a lot of information here, what were the reasons, how important was the work, and the main focus was on the group, group impulse, group cohesion, group work. and eventually group initiation. That's why even the book Race and Initiation was suggested as a reading material for the new seed group of 24. Now I will stop here. I let uh, you people unmute and I will open the floor. Okay, hear the, we've got some background noise, so please self-mute yourself if you're not going to speak. Okay, thank you. We've quieted down some of it. Uh, please, everybody, keep on mute, and only those unmute yourself who wants to ask a question. Okay, Elena, I would like to make a comment. This is yeah. Biel. Um, I find it extremely fascinating what you've said. Um, I just muted everybody for a minute. Uh, but what I, okay. Master DK is very critical in the Dinah book um, about how this was a failure. But I see this as not a failure. I mean, he might have failed um, in the goal that he was trying to do, but the way that it's documented and the information that these disciples give us, it's, it's just amazing to me uh, what we can learn from uh, this particular failed um, attempt. So thank you very much for pointing out this all to us. Uh, that is a very good point. Could we have, could we stop the echo? Okay, it's just you. It's a very, it's, it's a very good point because that's exactly where these, all these projects did not fail because they have provided for us to learn through this. Uh, even he called them failure because we can learn uh, from their failure that we don't fail on the same grounds what di they did. And so the information is invaluable and the process uh, through which each of the disciples went because they were all learning different things, they were all on slightly different uh, stages and uh, going through different tests, but I am sure that each of us find recognition in some or a few of these disciples, either through the ray energies presented, which were uh, these disciples conditioned by, and also through the astrology itself. So yes, in that case, you know, the, the, um, it, was not, it was not a failure in, in, that, in that respect, because, you know, we see it even today in many group, group projects where, you know, the members 
had to or should be complying by the requests uh, and standards, uh, particularly of the more spiritual nature. And they completely ignore, criticize, and do what they think it's better thing to do. And that's why they destroy the group process, the group, group uh, integration, it stopped. And uh, that's why, you know, this is, uh, this is an important, uh, I would I say, um, for us a spiritual opportunity really to look at this uh, because it has so much for us, you know, to offer and we can learn through. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to unmute everybody else to see if anybody has a question. But please, for all of you, please mute yourself so we have, we don't have that uh, echo. Any questions, Elena? Yes. Is, this is Yvonne, and uh, somebody with me was asking, and I didn't know, are there seed groups today? Uh, are there going to be seed groups? Is Moria Federation a uh, precursor to a seed group? Uh, I am not last, quite, yeah, I am not year, quite under, okay. sorry. Somebody asked, not, uh, somebody asked if there were seed groups or were going to be new seed groups, and as far as, uh, Dina, our discipleship, we had read as a group, uh, discipleship in the New Age uh, took us a couple of years to get through it. And it's fascinating because you can identify with these disciples of the same race that you. And the Master Moria came down twice a year and gave them an update. Boy, would that be nice, huh? <laughs> Master Moria of all? No, no not Shohan? Master Moria, DK. DK. <laughs> DK. That's a DK I'd take, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, well, you see, um, uh, the the ten seed groups, uh, what you're talking about in in uh, Dina one, uh, on 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 the basis of those, he really uh, formed his own seed groups, and his as I said, his original intention was to form a ten seed groups, uh, but only five of them were formed and, and the last one, the, the political one, has only three or four members there. So, um, but the principal idea of the seed group and how they should work and what kind of uh, uh, topics or qualities they should work on and what kind of chakra uh, system and all that, it's, uh, it's uh, presented in these you know, in these five groups which he tried to, uh, you know, train. So we can learn on those principles. Will there be new seed groups? Uh, well, that is always the potential, yes. Thank you. But what it, what it exists on inner level, it will always come down on physical plane. And on the inner level, there are already many seed groups. So many people out there of knowledge and have no questions? Hello, this is Sheldon. Can I make a comment? Hi, Sheldon. Helena, this is a wonderful presentation. I just want to say I, I found it so, finding it so informative. Um, I love the history. 
And um, I just wanted to add one, just one historical comment to this. Um, uh, what you highlighted with that first groups of nine was the, the lack of group integration, you know, and talking about the heart center and, and that kind of focus. It turns out that in 1946, of all years, <laughs> um, a, a movement started <clears throat> by a couple of psych social psychologists um, in, in New York to uh, study what, what was then called group dynamics. And they, they formed um, an organization called National Training Laboratories, which has been going since then. But they, used, they would run three-week seminars where people would gather to study the dynamics of the group and watch how group integration unfolded. And um, I've been a member of that group since 73, but, but it's interesting history to see kind of what maybe the hierarchy and who knows what was behind this, this, this attempt to try to pick up where that first process had left off because there are now a number of people who are involved, um, you know, in that what would be loosely called the facilitation of groups business, but really trying to build that sense of group identity and group cohesion. But that took off just as he began to, uh, you know, he ceased his writings to most of those disciples. Yes, that's, that's very, very interesting, isn't it, Sheldon? Uh, because uh, DK never does anything, uh, you know, randomly. <laughs> and when he wants to decide uh, something, uh, even the nature of disbanding a group, uh, he is doing it at a particular time and with a particular astrological energies too because he was an excellent astrologer and psychologist. Um, uh, so, um, and he was trying to present the new Aquarian techniques and, you know, a forming of groups. That's Aquarian energy. Um, so, you know, that what you said that coincided for, for the same year, it's not an accident. Yes. Yes, you know, uh, I just want to just keep building on what you're saying because he says in some other places that, that many others have read my books that, that you are not aware of, my students or disciples. <laughs> and uh, these teachings have gone far and wide. And I can't help but think that um, it's got to be, to some degree, his own initiative that, the, that was picked up uh, by, this, uh, by this development of, of groups, studying group processes and how to produce this. But it, 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 for me, it's always been a form of, of great encouragement to see how, how um, these lines of initiative have been carried on. So again, this is, this is wonderful stuff. Yes. Thank you, Sheldon. Anybody has a courage to Hello, ask Vic? anything? Hello, this is Victor. Hi, Victor. Uh, I have a question. Uh, we were asked to read about C CDT, and you mentioned that the letters mean something like what they're to work on. Do you know, or could you share what the C or D or P stands for? That is going to be my next little talk. Right now, after the questions. Oh, you're going to, there's more? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. I just would like to uh, hear some question to this presentation, what I have just done. Uh, Elena, I'm going to suggest that we, move, that we move on. Okay. We're, we're already an hour and 11 minutes into the broadcast, so let me just mute everybody again and let you move on to your uh, intro to CDP. Okay? Okay. Yes. Oops. Sorry, I muted you too. 
you see on the screen the natal chart of the disciple CDP and here you see CDP and Victor asks uh, what are these three letters represent, what kind of qualities for this disciple. Uh, the first C represents courage and it's this disciple has uh, has kept the sequence of the qualities in their importance uh, the way DK requested. So for her it was a woman, for her courage, to develop courage uh, was uh, the most important quality. The D, the letter D, uh, represents dispassion. Uh, she had to develop dispassion, emotional detachment. She was very much emotionally attached to her children and to her family particularly. And the letter P represented pure love. Uh, when we come to the, to the race, the five race which were conditioning her, she had a very interesting, unusual, but very difficult combination of ray energies. Second ray soul, sixth ray personality, fifth ray mind, sixth ray astral body, and very unusual placement of a six ray conditioning of physical etheric field and the brain. So a powerful six ray focus. And as uh, you can imagine or understand, these are the hundred percent correct rays given by the master. There is no question if this is it. And so that is another valuable tool for us to see in each disciple how these ray energies work uh, with the slightly different qualities and particularly the focus of the, of the soul ray in the lower bodies and the personality in the lower bodies and so, so on in variation process of the integration and alignment. Uh, at this stage, I am not going to go to any detail of the chart because I have, you see how the time, it's taken just, you know, one piece of information and there is far from what I planned from this webinar to do, so I will just carry on in the next webinar. So. Um, at the moment I just briefly say that this disciple was a woman who came from a very wealthy family and she had no real occupation. She was uh, devoted, she devoted all her time to her children and her family and because uh, of her wealth she helped financially Alice Bailey by giving her clothes and other things and they were actually very good friends. And also she has supported the work of the Master DK. A CDP belonged to the group of nine of telepathic communicators uh, with eight another disciples. Uh, in order to better understand the, the, the personal instruction to these disciples and the information, terminology and language DK is using um, and also that some of these disciples in this telepathy group suffered from etheric devitalization uh, even each of them were, was uh, at a different stage of the past and level in consciousness, the causes of this etheric devitalization were different. 
And so it is of value to read the book Telepathy and the Etheric Vehicle. Because when I was doing some of these disciples, I read the book again. Even I read it before, but I read it again. And I have understood the instruction so much better because he was referring to so many passages in that book. So for those of you who are really interested and find, for example, that you know, those disciples who were in the telepathic uh, group particularly, uh, and you find that you have a lot in common in, in the way of the qualities or, or the ray energies, it would be of value. Uh, you know, to study also, to, to, read, to read that uh, book uh, again. Now, uh, to, to give you another piece of information is that uh, I have access, or should I say we, I have access to the information as to very, very minimal access of information as to when these disciples were born, where, the time of birth, and so on. Um, they had to fill up applications. The Master DK provided uh, and asked them to fill up, each of them, application. And one of the questions was, you know, like, uh, state your date of birth and all the details, time, uh, where, is your son, where is your sun, where is your moon, where is your ascendant, what do you think is your soul ray, and all these questions were there. And as we know that each of us is more informative, than, uh, give more information than the other, and some were very, very mean on information and, and, and hardly any knew, you know, um, like, <laughs> Uh, their birth chart or, or even the race they were guessing. So, um, for number of the disciples I have rectified the chart purely on the instructions, which is, you know, uh, I, I can only say hypothetically uh, correct rectification, the same as we hypothesize our race. But uh, my rectification uh, went through a little group uh, who uh, at the early stages were checking, you know, and everybody contributed their opinion and uh, we have worked with Michael um, uh, on uh, all this work, we work together. So, I have rectified this chart of CDP mostly from her instructions and uh, the only information which I had was her date of birth, which is April 10, 1887, and that she was born in the United States. And uh, the place of uh, birth uh, was taken from uh, address of a lady which could have been related to her, one of her family members, and um, where this lady was living, uh, um, or, you know, it w could have been even closer to, to the New York City. So, uh, obviously, I would not be going in any of these webinars to the process of my rectification because uh, there are many members who would be attending these webinars, I'm sure, who, who does not know much about astrology and it's a very, um, very detailed and, uh, you know, work which needs patience and concentration. So those of you who are interested how I arrive, for example, at rectifying this chart with a cancer ascending uh, around two degree of cancer, would have to go to the Makara website 
and find all the information there. The another thing I would say that all the disciples who are uh, uh, on the Makara, uh, the work I have done and also Michael were early 2000, 2003, 4, and since then both of our understanding and knowledge uh, ex expanded, or I like to think so, because when I am going through through it again, I can see how much I would like to change and add and so on. So, um, about, about the word of courage, I would say here, as it was asked about it, that um, uh, the courage was not a fighting courage here, or any sort of struggle to be brave. Uh, it was a, car a courage of the soul, which, uh, which would strengthen her. It is the courage of the soul's sure knowledge, uh, which is uh, holding, uh, holding steadily and unquestioning in the middle of difficulties. Uh, that sort of courage. Uh, which, you know, I would be talking about that when we actually go through each of the instruction for this, uh, for, for, for this disciple. Uh, I was actually saying uh, that uh, when I was preparing for this, for this first webinar, I said, I hope I'm still alive and I'm doing uh, maybe the third disciple. <laughs> because the work is so uh, if one wants to cover, uh, you know, uh, in more detail uh, every instruction and relate the instruction to the astrological chart and uh, covering the ray energies and uh, the chakras and all which goes with it, it's, you know, uh, it's very time consuming process. So maybe I will just focus on the major points in order, you know, to uh, that people who are not so versed in astrology and even in the race uh, would be able to follow it to some uh, extent. Um, so uh, I would say about her race uh, uh, that with a six-ray powerful focus, um, many of her problems were due to the relation existing between her uh, personality six-ray, astral body six-ray, and the uh, physical uh, six-ray, uh, which was uh, automatically these, these uh, three uh, I would say, when we're talking about the lower bodies, the astral and physical bo bodies were the servants of the personality, which was also on a sixth ray. Um, uh, so, um, what, what her soul decided, actually, uh, and that it means herself as a soul, uh, that she assumed the responsibility in this incarnation to handle these terif terrific forces of the six ray energy because she already was under this very powerful force of this energy for the past three incarnations. And she deliberately, or her soul deliberately, chosen again in this fourth life uh, to work with these energies and to uh, to transmute, transform, and, you know, to, to put some kind of a concluding life of handling, uh, uh, handling this force uh, through uh, the presented opportunities which she has been given, and particularly under the instruction of a master. So, and uh, the sixth ray uh, physical body is very rare, uh, very rare placement, uh, which only is possible for a disciple. Uh, it is a question of 
a freedom of choice where the soul decide prior to incarnation to choose a particular uh, ray energy on one of the three levels for a specific reason and this is a fundamental difference that average person has not this freedom of choice he just follow the desire and instinct either to come back into incarnation or he has basically uh, did not reach did not work as a disciple work in uh, transmutation of energies transmutation of karma and so the, this freedom of choice is available only uh, to the, a disciple and there are particular stages of the past when this freedom of choice become available and I will be talking about this issue of the assignment of the different race which this disciple had and uh, why was this freedom chosen so this is this is just a little introduction to to this uh, uh, to this disciple and so in the next webinar I will start with this uh, with this assignment of the race and I will see uh, uh, you know how far that takes me and uh, continue further and then we come to the first instruction uh, to relate it to the astrological chart now if anybody has any question to what I just said I've unmuted everybody again, so please keep again, yourself so please on self-mute unless you have something, a question. Thank you. Helena, this is uh, this is Sheldon. I, I for some reason I missed the the P in CDP. Pure love. Pure love. Pure love. Oh, that's great. I'm <laughs> good. And were you, uh, Ellen, just to continue for a moment? Were you um, more or less indicating that the given all the sixth ray in this chart and perhaps uh, something similar had been going on for several lives that she was probably aiming to bring all this under control of the second ray then? Yes, yes. No. that's correct. Okay. correct. Right. Any brave rocks? Uh, if there are no questions... Uh, Elena, I don't have yes. a question, but I'm delighted that you're doing that because we're not studying it anymore and this gives me an opportunity to study it. So I'm delighted that you're going to be doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Elena, this is Dorothy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, I'm amazed at the ray structure with this um, person and how incredibly intense that would be, all the way down to the physical body of having to deal with that kind of um, six ray power. Yes. And and the detachment she must have had to try to uh, learn, even physically. It's just amazing to me. Yes. 
particularly that also the brain is conditioned by the sixth ray. Yes. And when the brain is conditioned uh, also by, by the energy, any ener ray energy, you know, we always have to take one of the physical glands in, uh, in the head, that is the pineal pituitary or uh, the outer major or the carotid gland. But we will be talking about it when we come actually to it. I am very pleased that there was such a good turn up for this webinar because uh, I didn't know how, what kind of interest would be about this subject. So I'm very pleased that you have all found the time. Um, will these webinars be posted, or are they just a live, uh, a live web webinar that we can't listen to again? Well, they are being recorded uh, by three people here now, and they will be posted on Makara. So everybody can listen to them in their own time, uh, whenever. Hi, this is Eva. Uh, I'd like to mention also that they are going to be posted on our new uh, website as well. So uh, once uh, that's launched, and it's going to be launched in about a week or so, uh, there will be access to all these webinars that have been um, held in the past, as well as all kinds of other information. So I encourage everybody to, uh, you know, get all this off our website. It will be the moriafederation.com website. So that is another very good uh, piece of information because the website has been reconstructed, upgraded. Right, Eva? Yes, oh, Jocelyn. Sorry, I just had to unmute myself. Yes, it has been. Yes. Yeah, Jocelyn's done a fantastic job of putting that external website together. I can see even Tuya has found the time. <laughs> Welcome, Tuya. Thank you so much. Hello. I'm sorry <laughs> that I'm late. <laughs> At the last minute, you catch the. <laughs> El Eleanor, can you hear me? Oh, even Mike, I'm, I'm even worse, and oh. I'm, I'm depending on the re recording, and, but I just want to say how very pleased I am that all of your wealth of knowledge is now being made available in this consistent and systematic manner. It's going to help a lot of people. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the recording. It's been one of those days, and uh, I'll yes, spare you the details. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you. So, anybody else going to say anything or? Uh, well, now that you mention it. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, you, ha you have you not been. No, I haven't. I, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I, I, I just want to say that I have been presenting, you know, the introduction uh, to how the groups were formed and, you know, all okay, the background okay. to it and just a little bit introduction to the CDP and, uh, you know, 
Yes, it yes. Is so much information and in the time is not, was not allowed to proceed any, any further than that. No, I understand. You're kind of doing it with an hour and a half, right? Is that that's the idea? Yeah, something <clears throat> like that. I was just wondering what you were making, not for maybe you discussed it, but what you were making out of this elevated Saturn in Pisces. We were it's, actually it's, not even discussing the chart. I just put it up uh, okay. that uh, I, I just made uh, some uh, some remark about the qualities represented by the C and B and P and her, and her race structure and. Uh, hmm. Uh, there was. There is not going to be time to actually start uh, the the uh, first instruction in relation to the chart uh, until the maybe the third webinar. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm you looking know? forward to it, Elena. So. Yeah. Well, I like to see you on yeah. every one of them, Michael. <laughs> yes, I I know. I, I, I what I've been trying to do is give everybody space to be themselves without yeah. having the pressure me around, but you know, I, I'm very interested in the subject. As you know, we, we started yes, working on this a long time ago, and uh, yes. you've carried it on, so that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes, I appreciate Okay. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Where do you get these wonderful charts where the decanates are printed? Uh, are these the decanates that DK gave, pretty much, are they? Well, Michael, actually, you gave me this chart. Oh, well, you see? That's how it's... <laughs> 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 oh, my, you my, said, my, 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 my. <laughs> and you said, you know, you, you had it from Nicholas. Okay, okay. Who has designed various of these charts, but these decanets are represented only by the uh, normal, what we call, rulership. Oh, okay. This is the Alan Leo. Alan Leo. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, uh, yes, okay. Because, you see, it is, I'm sure that's why uh, even Nicholas didn't uh, attempt yeah. to put the, you know, okay. the esoteric rulers, because, you know, they varies. Yes. They mm -hmm. vary, and sometimes they are not. We are not even sure that Correct. that is the ruler. So. But but yeah. somehow even the the Hindu system with Alan Leo, it does in some sense work. Oh yes, so, certainly. So, so it's good to have them there, and it wouldn't be wonderful to have. We can talk to Nicholas. Maybe another. Yes. I don't know, you know, to to have also the DK, decanate rulers, uh, in another circle. It would be wonderful to have that. Yeah, that would be uh, that would be ideal, mm, mm, you know, exactly. to have it. Uh, and even even, uh, uh, even uh, something else to add, if, if possible, somebody who is good in construction of designing this, maybe Tuya is very good at these things, mm, um, mm. Uh, when we could add the division of the Dwaramchas, dwarfs, by yes. the three, you know, uh, this the is dwarves. very important. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. And because one day in the distant future, we get to know the substance of every single degree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <you know. laughs> Sorry. I have actually ma made uh, uh, in uh, PowerPoint and um, uh, what was the other program, but how to transmit them into the solar fire that one could use them, you know. I have the pattern. But I don't know how to put that into the solar fire that it could be used. Yes. Well, we can talk to the people and see, mm -hmm. you know, what yeah. can happen. But anyway, off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes with the first, uh, first uh, thing well, you're starting. You never know how, how it's never, going to go. You never know, but you'll be fine. Everything will be fine. I'm yes. Very happy and about this. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, we are 24 people here, and the maximum on this program is 26. <laughs> yes, well, we have to think about whether it will also be possible to do a webinar. If it looks like our audience is uh, increasing, we'll, we'll make the webinar thing available. We'll, yeah. you know, we'll find a way. We shall see how it goes. Thank you so much, Eleanor. Very, very oh, pleased. thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Are you going to go on, Ellen, to the next? Well, we can we can as there is you know no more no more comments or no more questions. You know we can close down. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending, and uh, hopefully we will meet for the next webinar, which is where B L when. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let me get to my calendar. About 16 of December, or when, or 19th, I'm not sure. The 15th of December. Yeah. You're not muted. Sunday, Sunday the 15th of December. At the same time? Yes, 9 p.m. GMT. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Elena. This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you Elena. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elena. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Elena. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Elena. <laughs>